What's up guys, it's Uncle Freedom coming to you again on a lovely, glorious, and well-deserved day off to talk to you about no-go pistol defensive ammo. Here's the deal, I've dug around long and hard through stacks and stacks of ammo cans looking for examples of all of these bullets. I just don't have them anymore because they were so bad, they were not worth keeping. Um, first up, though, on the, the first thing to remember on this list... When I say these rounds are bad, these rounds pretty much unanimously fail, even failing bear gel standards more often than not. They don't function well out of short handguns, long handguns. They just don't do what they're supposed to do. And for a defensive round to not complete its mission of stopping inside of a certain distance and dumping its energy there, we have a problem. So, without further ado guys, here are 10 rounds. No go. And I'm sorry, I got news for you here. Your favorite round might be on here, but facts don't care about your feelings, man. This is me shooting it through jail, my opinions, my observations. So if that sounds like fun, go ahead and like, subscribe, tell a friend, share this video, because maybe the live you say from somebody shooting bad ammo could be your best friend. Hopefully it's not you, at least not that you would admit. So first up on this list is the Winchester Silver Tip. What an excellent idea. Let's just put everything together backwards and have a nickel silver tip in a brass case because that way we can call it silver tip. This shit's terrible. <laughs> um, 147 grain or 115 grain. You're looking at 1225 and 383 foot-pounds of energy for 115 grain and 1010 feet per second and 333 foot-pounds of energy out of 147 grain. This has worked in bear gel. A couple times. Maybe. Um, it does come apart in jail. Like, it's just, this is not a good option, guys. I, I, this stuff doesn't work. Um, it's a cool marketing ploy, but it does not work. There are better options from Winchester. The deal with this stuff is, and something to remember about this no-go ammo, is a lot of this no-go ammo is very inexpensive. And that makes people buy it because it says defense on the box. And then it zips through the bad guy, takes out the dog like the ATF just stormed your front porch, and ends up embedding itself in your neighbor's mailbox. Don't do it, okay? It's not it's not worth it. Get some better ammo. The place you want to save money is not in your defensive ammo, okay? So first up, Winchester Silver Tip. That's a no-fly zone for me, guys. Um, just no. The second one, and I do not have an example of this shit because it was that god-awful, um, is the G2 Rip. Holy crap. There are so many things wrong with this ammunition. I don't even know where to start. First off, it is terrible as an ammunition. We'll just, it's bad at it. Like, it goes in, it creates this really pretty starburst effect as it enters into ballistics gel at like fucking two inches, and the base goes like an additional eight inches. It's just not good. Everybody's like, well, it won't over penetrate. It also won't get to anything you're trying to hit either. I mean, it like tore the dude's pick up. Good for you. Now he's mad at you. And you did to stop the threat. Like, and oh, God help you if you hit anything with it. It just fucking comes apart and you basically frag the dude. He's got like little BBs and shit stuck in him. He's mad at you. It's like shooting a dude at 150 yards of bird shot. All you did was piss it off. Um, so don't do it. Not to mention, law enforcement hat on, guys. The... Ammo is not called rest in peace. It's called radically invasive projectiles, though not much better. However, the box has a tombstone. It says RIP, and any decent prosecuting attorney is going to use that against you. Is it unfair? Yeah, I don't think it should fucking matter. However, the reality is that is going to probably happen. Um, you bought an ammo that looked cool because it would kill things, and now you've been in a defensive shooting because somebody tried to hurt your family, and now you're on trial, getting your ass reamed out, and hopefully you had concealed carry insurance, and you were in the right, like USAA. This is not a plug for USAA. They do know who I am because I am a member and have been a member for several years, and I'll give you a little hint as to why. So I had a friend, not a very intelligent friend, um who was a big-time gun guy, um, and he got himself into a situation over a girl. It's always over a girl. And he ended up shooting a guy outside of his house and killing him. Now, Nebraska, where I live, is a duty-to-retreat state outside of your home. You have to make every available opportunity to escape from the situation. 
unless you are in your home where you don't have any, you don't have to do shit. They're in your house. That's, that's, that's their mistake. They done made that mistake. However, outside of your home, you have a duty to retreat, try to get away, um, and not be involved in the fight. That said, if you cannot get away and you can articulate that, that's when you could use force. Unfortunately for him, he was still in a car and he didn't drive away. He shot out of his car, threw another car at a dude that hadn't gotten all the way out of his car yet, struck him, I think, nine out times with a Glock 21. He was convicted of first-degree murder and use of a firearm to commit a felony. He is going to go to prison for the rest of his life. And that made it hit home to me that, man, he did not have an attorney. He had a public defender. And had he had USAA, not saying the shoot was good, they probably would have turned it down anyway. But at least there would have been a shot at it. Because USAA does pay for expert witnesses, your attorney's fees up front, and bail money to get you out of jail. Again, USAA is not a sponsor of me at all. Um, I pay for their services every single month. In fact, my monthly payment just came out yesterday. So put your money where your mouth is. I recommend USAA. They're great. If you do something like Texas Law Shield or one of these other ones, make sure they pay for an attorney in your state because Texas Law Shield does not cover my state. And there's another one, I can't remember the name of it, does not cover my state. So make sure you check that, guys. Get concealed carry insurance. It is worth the money. Because, again, we, we say buy better and the, the best concealed carry ammo you can for the best firearm that you can. Get the best training you can and be as proficient as you can. Why leave something as serious as the going-to-happen court case up to chance? Because I hate to break it to you. Even in a self-defense shooting, it is a very rare chance that you will be not jailed. You are probably more than likely sure as shit, going to be put in jail and you are going to have to prove your innocence. Is it stupid? Yes, but it's how the legal system works. So, that in mind, guys, concealed carry insurance, well worth every penny, and you get a great magazine from USA. It's awesome. So, maybe I'll tag them. Maybe they will like me. Maybe they'll discount my premium for a month. That'd be great. So, next up is another one of those weird ammunitions. It's Liberty Ammunition's Civil Defense. I have no more of this shit. It was interesting. I will tell it that. Like, that stuff's wild. It is a 50 grain solid copper hollow point that has a base about that thick on it. And that's it. The rest of it's just a hollow point. It just obliterates shit when it hits gel. But it only penetrates like 8 inches. Um, it just doesn't do anything. And the part that penetrates 8 inches weighs like 4 grains. Like, it's a BB. Um, that said, it is an interesting testament to speed out of a 9mm. Out of a 4 inch Glock barrel... On the box, it claims 2,040 feet per second for 462 foot-pounds of energy. However, in my testing, out of a Glock 19, which is a 4-inch barrel, mind you, 2,112 feet per second for 495 foot-pounds of energy. That's impressive as shit. And if the round actually worked, holy hell, that'd be amazing. But this shit is terrible. Don't do it. Um, it's not a good idea. Just any, no. Leave that shit alone. It looks pretty. It's all nickel plated. Just don't do it, guys. I'm telling you. Next up, I do have one of these, and that is the ubiquitous Remington Golden Saber. I want someone to explain to me how Remington created a premium defensive round that does not perform nearly as well as their normal UMC 115 grain hollow point. This stuff is the 124 grain plus P. We're looking at 1,125 feet per second, which is pretty slow for 124 grain, doing three, with 348 foot-pounds of energy. I don't give a shit what you shoot this into. The core and the jacket separate. It just it happens. It clogs up. It bends the tips. Going through plywood, it'll pinch in on itself, and it's a full metal jacket. And even then, it may not over-penetrate, but it's basically just like you throw a rock at them. Um, no go, guys. The Remington Golden Sabres are terrible. Uh, they are just not good. Please don't do it. Next up, and one that surprised me because it was super hyped when it came out and everybody was running it, and that is the SIG Elite Performance with the Sierra V-Crown projectile. These don't penetrate very well. Now, I will tell you, if you were shooting a subcompact and you were putting the rounds and you were only expecting bare gel or clothing, they would probably work. They function and penetrate about as well as Hornady's critical defense. They are absolutely terrible on any barrier I've ever put them through. It does not matter, and they have failed on clothing numerous times. So that's a big no-no for me. Like, if you do the first two right, we can talk. But 
Uh-uh. It doesn't even do those well. Another thing to keep in mind with these, these are hot. Um, I don't know how else to describe it. So the box on these guys says the 124 grain is doing 1165 feet per second now mind you that is 40 feet per second faster than the plus p variant i just talked about that's hot um but in reality like that creeps up to like 1180 sometimes which is still within plus p territory but this is not a plus p round and i hate to break it to you there is no magic sauce that decreases pressure when you start jacking up speed on a handgun now there's another round, and it's the new one. It's the M13 or M17 9mm NATO spec, 124 grain plus P. This shit's moving. Um, I have seen this on numerous occasions. Split the fucking case mouth. Brand new factory fresh ammo. Just splitting case mouths coming out because it was so hot. We're talking close to 1300 feet per second. 1265 is what it actually has. Or it's actually listed at 1198 feet per second so you're talking 33 feet per second than the standard pressured version however when we chronoed it it was getting 1250 1260 and we were splitting the cases nasty shit even if it is fast and it did work i can't recommend it because it fucking blows up inside of the gun consistently don't do it bad idea leave it all the way alone so the next one, and probably one of the worst projecting rounds I've ever seen, is another offering from Winchester Browning, and that is the Browning X-Point, 147 grain. Again, we went fancy and shiny to make you buy it. I mean, hell, it worked on me. I bought it to test it. Uh, it's got a cool X inside of it, you know, in case you're going to hunt vampires or something. Supernatural reference. But this shit is absolutely hot garbage. It fails to actually open up and expand in bear gel and punches through it like a fucking full metal jacket. Don't even get me started on shooting it through anything else. It just doesn't work. Um, please don't. There are much better options. Now, the next ones I don't have with me because I have shot them and either I didn't have any more of them left or I just I threw them away or I pulled the bullets because I wanted the brass. First one is another Winchester offering, and that is the USA Ready with the hex vent insert. 124 grain plus P doing 1,200 feet per second and 396 feet per uh, foot pounds of energy sounds a lot like the HST, right? Now, if only it did what it was supposed to. The hex vent was their their attempt at making something similar to Hornady's critical duty and critical defense insert that made it so that it didn't actually get clogged up by material and it forced the expansion of the round. However, in my experience, it doesn't do that. It'll actually still get clogged. It still over penetrates, and sometimes it forces the issue of expansion so fast. We were getting nine or eight inches on the high end for penetration in bare gel. Don't do it. Not worth your time or your money. The next is another Winchester offering. And I just told you how good the Ranger T's were, right? Well, there's another one. It's called Ranger 1. And it's got a really cool insert in the end of the bullet. I'm starting to catch a trend here. When people do inserts in the end of the bullet and their name isn't Hornady, it doesn't function very well. Those are the same damn thing. We got a hold of those. We shot them. We got abysmal penetration and soft and uh, bare gel and through clothing. It did expand like it was supposed to, but the penetration barely clipped the 12 inch mark. Then we put it through uh, barriers and it just failed. Like it didn't even try. Like it went through plywood and shot out the side of the block. It went through steel and just punched through the block. It went through uh, auto glass and it shredded the bullet. And we basically shot it with shrapnel and like a chunk of the, the the base. Like it just peels the front off. Now keep in mind when you shoot through auto glass, the pedals on bullets are designed to expand and rip off in order to keep the bullet somewhat intact. That way, when the bullet hits, you get straight line penetration, deep enough to actually hit the vital zone of what it is you're trying to hit. But the Ranger 1s were not it for me. That was the 147 grain offering doing 1,010 feet per second, 333 foot-pounds of energy. If that sounds familiar to you, that's because the Winchester Silver Tips were also 1,010 feet per second with 333 foot-pounds of energy. I don't know about you, but seeing four offerings or five offerings so far from Winchester Browning on here is not looking real good for their budget hollow points. Please don't do it. And Ranger T's are expensive. Or the Ranger 1's are expensive, so even more don't do it. Huh. And the last Winchester on the list, it could also be applied to Herders, which is made by Winchester. Y'all are catching a trend here. And that is anything white box and hollow point. Like, couldn't you have just interviewed the people at Remington and figured out what they did that made their green and white box shit actually expand and do what it was supposed to? Because this shit don't do it. Um, it, it. It does the same shit 
the silver tip does. And I'll be honest with you, if you look at the silver tip and the Winchester white box, other than the fact that one of them is pretty looking, they're the same fucking bullet. So if it didn't work on the silver tip, why would you think it would work there or work in a herder's version when you put it into something else? Please don't do it. Leave it alone. 1165, 347 foot-pounds of energy. 30, inconsistent, and it just doesn't fucking work. Number 10 and one that is going to probably hurt some feelings is Federal Hydroshock. I know, boo, whatever. We tested Federal Hydroshock against Hornady's ammo with Hornady. And in five rounds, or no, in all of the rounds through the thing, it failed all but one of them. And when I say failed, like deep over penetration, like the shit hit the berm 20 yards away. Like it wasn't tumbling either. That shit just slammed into it. I mean, it left a nice pick going through the fucking block. Please don't do it. I don't know what it is about the Hydroshock. I get it. It's supposed to penetrate. It's supposed to be devastating. It does not do that. Like beer gel, it opens up great, but there are way cheaper options that open up great. Is it bonded and it punches through a you know, is, does it punch through uh, barriers? Sure does. It also punches right through the thing after the barrier, too. Probably not a good idea. It's not a great self-defense round because it has serious over-penetration issues. So if killing an elephant behind your bedroom wall is what you're going for, probably your option. So last but not least, we have one honorable mention in here. And this is an honorable mention that I have seen people talk about, I have seen people carry, and I've seen people get excited about because... A couple of years ago, somebody made a video talking about the largest expanding hollow point there is. And that is the Norma Monolithic hollow point. Okay, where do we start? These are a solid copper round. That does okay in bear gel. 10 to 13, 15 inches of penetration somewhere in there. It does expand. It's a big, beautiful hollow point. But it's not always consistent. Now we add in clothing. And it's really less consistent. Now we add any barrier whatsoever. If you look at the front of this guy, the way this thing is designed, if you see those little cracks in there, any dang dent you get going through something that pushes those into each other or off to the side, this no longer opens. Maybe you have one pedal that doesn't get damaged and it comes out and it flaps like a wounded fucking duck, but it still over penetrates because it's not slowing down. I wanted to like this round. I wanted this round to be, I really, really wanted this round to be good. Because that's a sexy fucking round, guys. We've got that black nickel case. Nickel, I mean, it's, I mean, it appeals to my, like, shiny things. Like, this is shiny. This works. This does not work in real life, though. Um, it gets worse if you put it through a pistol caliper carbine. Because I was hoping that would be a saving grace. It didn't matter if I shot it through short barrel pistols. It didn't matter if I shot it through Glock 34s. It just didn't work. Um... And I expect it a lot because Norma makes great ammunition. This is just not one of them, which might explain why you've seen this shit on clearance for 5 or $6 a box of 20 from Primary Arms of Palmetto State Armory. It's just not a good round. Um, they missed the boat with this, which sucks because this could have been really, really, really damn cool. So guys, there you go. Top 10 no-go rounds and why. Let me know if you've got one that I didn't have on my list that maybe I should. I think you got something I haven't tried yet, and I should go find it because I need to know how well it works. Maybe you just think I'm an idiot. You didn't like any of that shit because, like, two of the rounds you've got are on that list, and you just don't like that at all because that means you wasted money. Hey, man, facts don't care about your feelings in this world. Sometimes really nice ammo just doesn't work, and that is the case with several of these rounds. Um, it's kind of a bummer because, in my opinion, the more really, really good carry rounds we have, the more likely I am that somebody's going to have those really good carry rounds in their defensive firearm, as opposed to something that's going to cause a problem you didn't intend to do. Because as we've said, and everybody else has said, every bullet you fire from your gun has got a lawyer attached to it, whose only job is to fuck you and rake you over the coals. Please get USAA, because at least if it's a good shoot, you have a really good shot with good attorneys. Just, just do it. Again, they don't know who I am, not sponsored by them. I pay my bill every month like everybody else that has USAA. It's just worth having. Uh, and especially as freaking ridiculous as our world is now. I mean, people hating on each other for no other reason than they, 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 just, they were told to hate them. So please get carry insurance. Your family's worth it. Um, and if you don't have a family, you're worth it. At least somebody should tell you that at least once today. So guys, I am Uncle Freedom. You take care of yourself. Take care of each other. And until next time, stay tuned for the rifle defensive ammo, my top 10, as well as another top 10 of please don't do it for rifle ammo no-goes. So until next time, guys, I'll see you later.